So, ladies and gentlemen, my next topic is about Christian worship. Because as Christians, we Christians are not bound by any particular form of worship. Everybody please say form. We are not bound by any kind of form of worship. We Christians are commanded by our Lord to worship the one true God in spirit and truth. Everyone say spirit and truth. Spirit and truth is about the temperament of your heart. It is about the intention of your mind. It is about the desire of your heart to glorify the one true and only God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Lord taught us that when we worship God as an individual, we should do it privately and out of sight so that the world will not praise us. Our Lord said, when you pray, go to your rooms in secret, lock the door so that only your Father in heaven knows what you are doing. So we don't make a public spectacle of ourselves as Christians in worship. Because what good we do, we do for the glory of God, not the praise of men. Unlike some religions I could mention, who regularly in the park make a public spectacle of their piety so that everybody thinks, oh, they are so religious. That is the height of hypocrisy to worship God in public so that everyone can see and display your worship as a badge of pride. However, Christ also said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be amongst them. Which means that our Lord institutes the idea of collective worship. And when Christians worship collectively, because of the freedom of the gospel, everybody say freedom of the gospel. We Christians are free to worship however we want. But the apostles teach that public worship should be ordered and organized, not chaotic. And so Christians organize their public worship along the lines of liturgies. Two liturgies in particular are the historical ways of organizing Christian worship. The liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the mass. The liturgy of the word is that which leads up to the preaching of the divine word of God, which for the earliest Christians was the Old Testament. And this is taken directly out of temple worship, that the earliest Christians, according to the book of Acts, used to embrace and go to. But with the destruction of the temple, we Christians continue to worship in houses of prayer, remembering the words of the Old Testament and the recollections of the apostles and celebrating the communion of the mass, the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is amongst us. I hold in my hand the book of common prayer. The book of common prayer is the English liturgy. It was developed by the people of these lands. The Ethiopian church has theirs. The Armenian church has theirs. The Roman church has theirs. And every church organizes its worship differently along different lines. And the point of liturgical worship for the Christian is that it beautifies the mind. Everyone say, beautify the mind. Beautifying the mind equips the soul so that when you encounter challenges, you are able 
to trickle off a response like reciting the psalm the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he leadeth me to greeneth pastures and biddeth me lie beside still waters he guideth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake lo though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil for the lord is with me thy staff and thy rod they comfort me thou hast anointed my head with oil and i feast in the presence of my enemies lo though i walk through the valleys of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil for thou art with me i may have got that recitation wrong it's been a long time since i've tried to recite it but the point of liturgical worship is that it beautifies the mind and equips the soul with the resources that you can pull up prayer at a moment's notice and i want to read a prayer for the book from the book of common prayer that was produced in the 1600s and i want to show to you ladies and gentlemen that we christians that we christians beautify our prayer for a reason the point of these liturgies the point of these great cathedral worships was that they lifted the medieval peasant out of the drudgery of his life out of the mud and the squalor and the death and the disease and the rats and the fleas and he walked into these beautiful cathedrals embellished with gold and art and tapestry and full of divine music of trained choirs and the smell of the incense because it lifted his soul out of himself everyone say the soul out of himself because by lifting the soul out of himself it creates the spirit by which we can worship god in spirit and truth without distraction no in modern times in modern times that kind of liturgical worship that kind of liturgical worship has become boring i'll be honest because given the cinemas the computer games and modern music liturgical worship is slow and mundane and boring i get it i agree and that's why modern christians have used modern worship like hill song like the red hill church of california to take modern forms of music to take the person outside of himself to worship god we beautify our worship because the one that we worship is beautiful and we worship our god because our god is worthy to be glorified not like that fake god of the muslims that false monad of the muslims that says that it's one but then is it one hand one shin one eye one leg i mean what one is it <laughs> and saying that you worship one god isn't that impressive anyway because the devil believes in one god so what special muslims about you believing in one god you see muslims if you heckle me i'm going to have a go at your religion I was happily talking about mine. But then you came and you heckled. So now I'm just going to bring your own religion down. So try and stop me. So ladies and gentlemen, notice the reality of what the Muslims do. They try to suppress. They try to suppress. Could you go and get one of the police is using a projected that's illegal in the park he's not meant to be using that in the park ah, that's illegal it's illegal ah, he's broke the law he's on camera that's up. illegal in the park you let's go get the police and have, have him removed you can't have a debate with me you, you can't, can't debate you, you can't debate you, you can't debate bro you can't debate Listen, you, run away you tried to steal wanna, someone's camera last week camera. who saw him try to grab someone's camera last week we got one two three four witnesses that saw that this Muslim, copying his thieving scumbag of a prophet, 
who robbed pagans, who stole and looted. Excuse me. Could you ask him to move, please? He's not meant to be using... We're not meant to be using uh, uh, projecting he's devices. He's, 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 he's using a projecting he's device in the park. Get do it to the police. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Islamists are beaten in the park. Their arguments are bankrupt. Their prophet looks bankrupt. Their dean looks bankrupt. That's why the Muslims don't debate us anymore. <laughs> they demand that we talk about our own religion, and then when they do, then when we do, what do they do? <laughs> so, returning to my topic, we beautify our worship as Christians because the one that we worship is beautiful. We make our worship glorious because the one that we worship is glorious. Christians, I want to read to you a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. And it is in regards to our current crisis, the COVID crisis. O Almighty God, who in thy wrath did send a plague upon thine own people in the wilderness, for their obstinate rebellion against Moses and Aaron, and also in the time of King David did slay with plagues of pestilence three score and ten thousand. And yet remembering thy mercy did save the rest. Have pity upon us miserable sinners who, have, who are visited with great sickness and mortality, that like as thou didst then accept of an atonement and did command the destroying angel to cease from punishing so it may now please thee to withdraw from us this plague and grievous sickness through jesus christ our lord and the people said Amen. ladies and gentlemen the point of liturgical worship is that it furnishes your mind with the bible it furnishes your mind with the scripture. It furnishes your mind with truth. So feed it into your lives, even if you don't go to a liturgical church. Okay, any questions? Yeah, you were, you were, you were proud a minute ago. So, we're going to do a battery change. Because you're just you cannot, going to shout. You cannot stick to your own You're just time. going to you, shout. You cannot. Who is shouting? Look, Look, you can accuse all you want. Who would you like can, to have a you, time you, debate between me and him? You can accuse. Right, we're going to do a time debate. I don't care what anyone Right, we're going to do three minutes. Care, three minutes. I don't care. Listen, okay, away from me, here's, here's, make him. Make him. There you go. Thank you. Listen. You're powerless, bro. You're powerless. You don't know me. You don't know me. Stop pretending. Bro. Are you trying to be threatening? Stop pretending. Who's trying to be threatening? Bro, you ain't scary. Who's trying, 